Good evening everyone. My name is Nikhil. I'm from engineering physics third year and today I'll be giving a presentation on the topic analog and digital filters in signal processing. So let's begin. So what is a filter? Basically filters uh, a filter is used to remove unwanted parts of a signal such as random noise or to extract some useful parts of the signal such as components lying within a certain frequency range and why do we need filters uh, simply to overcome signal distortion and corruptions during the transmission of signals and what are the conditions for distortionless transmission if it can be achieved so let us uh, study it by taking an example. Consider a continuous time analytical system with impulse response H of T and frequency response H of J omega. This is also the Fourier transform H of T. Uh, let a signal like T with Fourier transform X of J omega be applied to the input of the system and YT with Fourier transform Y of J omega output of the system. And by distortionless transmission, we mean that the output signal of the system is an exact replica of the input signal, except for amplitude scaling and a constant time delay. So, on this basis, uh, we can get output signal yt uh, equals k times x of t minus t naught, where the constant k accounts for a change in amplitude and the constant t naught accounts for a delay in transmission. Uh, applying the Fourier transform and using time shifting property to the above equation, uh, we get y of j omega equals k times x of j omega multiplied by e to the power minus j omega t naught. Therefore, we get the frequency response or the uh, transfer function of a distortionless system as h of j omega equals y of j omega divided by x of j omega which is then equal to the k times into e to the power minus j omega t naught. This indicates that in order to achieve the distortionless transmission of a signal, the frequency response must satisfy two conditions, that is the magnitude of the frequency response should be constant and the argument of the frequency response equals minus omega t naught. And these conditions are very difficult to obtain in real life and therefore distortion of transmission is almost impossible to achieve and apply it to the signals that's why using filters in signal processing becomes a necessity and also we can extract the desired parts and filter out unwanted frequencies using filters so why not and now i will cover some uh, type, types of filters which are these are ideal filters uh, so these are four types of filters basically uh, first is a low pass filter which allows all frequencies below a certain frequency fc which is the cutoff frequency to pass as you can see uh, it allows only the frequencies below omega naught to pass and the high pass filter is just the opposite of the low pass filter it allows all frequencies above this cutoff frequencies to pass and the next are the band pass filter which allows frequencies between two cutoff frequencies omega a and omega b in this case to pass and the band stop filter uh, the opposite of band pass filter band, uh, the band stop filter the opposite of band pass filter which stops all frequencies between two frequencies and two cut of frequencies as shown in the figure over to analog filters so analog filters are circuit made of analog components such as resistors capacitors inductors op amps and so these are fairly simple but can increase in complexity depending on the need uh, three types of analog filters are commonly used namely the Chebyshev, Butterworth and Bessel filters 
Each of these is designed to optimize the different performance parameters and the complexity of each filter can be reduced by selecting the number of poles. So the most basic analog filter is the silent key circuit uh, which is shown here. Comprising of resistors, capacitors and open. Which is the, uh, the cell, this silent key circuit is basically the building block of all and mostly all of the analog filters. Next is as shown here is a six pole bezel filter formed by cascading three silent key circuits. This is a low pass filter with a cutoff frequency of 1 kilohertz. As you can clearly see that cascading uh, three or combining three silent key circuits makes it quite complex. And uh, the study of it also becomes quite complex. So, Butterworth and Bessel filters are mainly used for physiological recording. Uh, Butterworth filters they produce the amplitude relationships between component waves, whereas Bessel filters they produce time relationships between component waves associated with the signal. But depending on the signal, it is important which filter to choose. Uh, taking an example uh, of the electrocardiogram, which is also called the ECG which help doctors to determine the cardiac health of a patient. It contains a series of component waves which have specific amplitude and time relationships with each other. And a subject's ECG can be substantially distorted if run through the wrong type of filter. So it is quite important uh, to know which filter to choose in which situation. Otherwise, uh, results can be quite deadly or not deadly but serious uh, so advantages and disadvantages of the analog signal so over to the pros these can be applied to any row signal in the uh, row form of a analog signal uh, can be implemented using simple RLC circuits, no and no need for ADC or DAC which are the analog to digital converter or the digital to analog converter which we will use later on uh, to study the digital filter. And they have a large dynamic range in amplitude and frequency. And the disadvantages are they are highly sensitive to any changes in movement and less flexible high cost to the components involved and difficult to design simulate digital filter digital filter is digital processors yeah. and a set of algorithms to perform computations on sampled values of continuous time signal so in this figure a digital filter is shown db and amplification components and after applying all the algorithms and summations, we get the output. So, what are the steps involved in design of a digital filter or operations involved uh, in design? Firstly, uh, we take XT as an input signal and it goes over to the ADC which converts the X, uh, continuous time signal XT into a sequence of X and of numbers. The digital filter then processes the sequence XN into a new sequence of numbers Y of M which is then converted into a corresponding continuous time signal by the digital to analog converter. And finally uh, this goes over, the, over to the reconstruction filter which produces a continuous time signal yt as the output signal and there are mainly two types of digital filters firstly the finite duration impulse response or the fir digital filter this filter has a finite impulse response as the name suggests uh, the transfer function h of z of a fir filter is a polynomial in z inverse which can be given by this which can be easily solved using the Z transform, uh, but which I will not be covering in this presentation. 
So the basic properties of the FIR digital meter. These have linear phase response. Uh, or these are automatically stable. Have high performance. And uh, over to the and yes, these uses convolution operation to solve the equations or solve the uh, transfer function. And second type is the infinite duration impulse response IIR digital filter. This filter has an infinite impulse response, as the name suggests. Uh, the transfer function H, H of Z of IIR filter is again a polynomial in Z inverse and is given by this. The, this looks quite complex but can be easily solved using the FF, uh, fast Fourier transform or FFT algorithm. Uh, oh, so over to the basic properties. These are significantly faster and more efficient than the FIR filter. Uh, these require less memory than the FIR filter and uh, uses recursive algorithms as they are significantly faster as recursive algorithms are faster than the convolution operations. And advantages of the digital filters are they are insensitive to environmental changes, noise and disturbances unlike the analog filters. These are more flexible as software and programs can be easily changed accordingly and no maintenance is required. Significantly easy to design and simulate as there are many simulation softwares uh, used nowadays. The disadvantages are choosing a DAC or ADC is quite a cumbersome process in itself and requires quite a good knowledge of the subject. Uh, have high these have high cost of production. Signal bandwidth is much lower compared to the analog filter and require more time in design and development. Uh, these might be uh, efficient in performance but require more time in design than the uh, as compared to the analog filters. Uh, the basic application of the digital filters is the filtering of speech signals and in speech processing applications it is essential to maintain precise time alignment so FIR digital filters uh, can be used because of their linear phase property uh, and this is a waveform of a raw speech signal as you can see this is quite a congested signal and have high noises high frequency noises which we should not need in the output signal so using a filter this gets converted this gets converted to this as we can see this is not as complex as the previous one and all the unwanted noises and waveforms are removed so on listening to these version of the speech signal uh, one can see the, that the pre-filtered signal was harsh with an abundance of high frequency noise such as clicks, pops and hissing sounds and the post-filtered signal was found to be much softer, smoother and natural sounding. Over to other applications of filters, uh, these are using noise suppression in imaging devices, uh, in bio signals or signals stored on analog media such as tapes. Enhancement of certain frequency ranges in audio systems like stereos and edge enhancement in images. For removal or attenuation of selected frequencies, removing interferences at a specific frequency goes by power supplies. Bandwidth limiting, ensuring that a transmitted signal occupies only its allocated frequency band and others are simulating communication channels these are used for the simulation of communication channels and modeling of human auditory systems which is quite 
a recent and good development in predictor application in signal processing so that's all thank you